Elrond has healed Frodo of his mortal wound, and now the time has come to decide the fate of the One Ring. I can see no other path than that which leads to Mount Doom. Who then shall defend Eriador against the shadow? I received a message from a man. Perhaps you know of him. He is a ranger by the name of Candace. The details are vague, but it seems of great importance that you talk to him. I believe it concerns the enemy's movements in the North Downs. He is staying at a camp northwest of Weathertop. Travel west to the Forsaken Inn, then go north until you reach his campsite. As you wish. Esteldon sends word that you are to go there and meet with Halvarad. Please hurry, for the orc fires burn hot and strong, and each moment we waste is another opportunity for the enemy. Word is spread about the help you have given the rangers to the south. Here in the northern lands we need your help now more than ever. While the eyes of Esteldon have been turned to the east, news from the west and south tells me that the enemy is moving on many fronts. I fear that the strength of Esteldon is nearly spent, and alone we cannot face this greater threat. A council of the free peoples of the North Downs must be called. Yet before I do so, I need more knowledge of this threat. I need to know if Thormast, once the capital of Arnor of old, has fallen under the sway of Angmar once more. If the enemy has taken and fortified the ruins of Thormast, we are in the gravest of dangers. Travel to Minchim. A ranger who camps on the fields of Fornos to the west, and ask for his aid. As you wish. Beware the fields, they have driven men mad. The enemy retaking Fornos of old. Aye, from what I've seen here, I believe it most likely that they have. From this lonely camp, I have seen the spectres of the Oathbreakers stir and fell spirits from Engmar take shape upon the fields. I have also seen orcs spilling out from the gates of Fornost. So yes, the enemy has indeed taken Fornost once more. What cannot be told is the strength of the enemy within the ruined city, and for that I shall need your help. I am here to be of service. Will you lend me your ear? I cannot tell you. 
the strength of the forces of Egmar within Fornost, for I did not see them approach. The orcs and wargs that guard the gates must have entered Fornost from the north. I fear the only way to know the true strength of the enemy within Fornost is to test the defenses erected at its gates by the orcs. I would do this myself, but my old injury prevents me from doing so. If you are willing, go to the Norbury Gates, north of here, and slay what orcs and wargs you find. After you have done so, bring me a report of what you find. No problem. I'm on my way. to face such beasts. You have my gratitude, Travian. I only wish I could have done this myself instead of sending you in my stead. But time and injury prevent me from wielding a sword, let alone drawing a bow. From what you tell me, Engmar did not merely send a token force to Fornost. Nay, it appears they sent an army. Fornost has fallen once more to Engmar. Quick now. You must return to Halbarad in Esteldon and tell him what you have learned here. Engmar has taken Fornost once more. From such a fortified spot, Engmar could dominate all the north. But there are even worse things to worry about. Tales tell of a great evil which inhabits the collapsed and ruined halls of Fornost. This evil could be called to serve Engmar. Go to Esteldon and tell Halbarad all that you have learned here. As you wish. I suppose we can be thankful that we are no longer as ignorant of the enemy's plans as once we were. Yet the question of how we will face this threat looms over us all. The peoples of the North Downs must be called together for a council to deal with this threat. There is much to do, and much I will ask of you in the days ahead, if you are of willing spirit. We will need the might of the Dwarves of Othricar if we are to face the threat of Engmar. The Dwarves there are good longbeards, but have long been put to task by the Daurhans. When the Daurhans showed their true loyalties, the longbeards drove them out of Othricar. Yet they are still hard-pressed by the Daurhans, and only recently has one of Durin's folk from Erebor, Dori, come to aid them. It will not be easy to convince them to lend their strength to the council, but you must try. Travel to Arthurkar and speak with Dori. If you cannot find Dori for some reason, speak to a dwarf named Hanar. It is he who leads the Longbeards of Arthurkar. I am on my way. You seek Dori? Alas, Dori has been captured by the Daurhans. An envoy of the traitors just left and said that if we did not turn over the mines to them, Dori would be killed. A council of the free peoples? <laughs> How can we give thought to a council with Dori gone? 
It was only with Dory's arrival and the horde of gems he brought that hope began to creep back into our hearts. But Dory has been captured. The gems lost and hope is stolen away. If those men, those rangers, wish to have the help of the dwarves of Arthurkar, then Dory must be freed. You, if you are the rangers' envoy, must do this if you desire our presence at this council. Dory is likely being held in the Darhan's camp to the west of Arthurkar. Free Dory and escort him to safety. Once he is free, we will make our decision regarding this council of yours. I will see what I can do to help. It's about time! Those dour hands took the hoard of gems I brought. We've got to get them back. Arthur Carr is depending on them. Come on now, before the dour hands get suspicious. Good to be free from these bars. Now, uh, follow me. We've got to get those gems back. They're deep in the camp. Follow me. For Othraka! When I was first brought here, I was taken into this, uh, was taken into this part of the camp. For the Longbeards! Not much farther now. Let's be off now. Stupid! <laughs> <laughs> 
Stay close. Walter now, it's only a bit farther. <laughs> At last, free of the dour hands. I can make it to Othercar from here. You have my thanks. You have done a great thing for the doors of Othacar this day. Dory arrived not long before you and is resting inside. But he told us of your valiant rescue. We are at your service. I am glad to be of service. Before he retired, I told Dory of your message about this council of Estelden. <laughs> He recommended that we should go, and I agree with him. The dwarves shall lend their might to this council and free all the North Downs from the clutches of the enemy. <laughs> go now and tell the rangers we shall come. I am on my way. These are good tidings. With the dwarves aiding us, our chances of turning the tide against Engmar are that much greater. You have done very well this day, Trubian. Very well indeed. To the south of Esteldin, there stands a small refuge of the elves. Many long years have the elves dwelt there. However, in recent days, most of the elves left the glade. What is worse, I have heard that those few that remained were slain by stone trolls from the north. It is an irony that Gildor and Glorian, an elf lord of Rivendell, was coming to give word of the enemy's movements, but arrived too late to save those who remained. He should be called to the council, but I fear that he will be too consumed by the desire to protect both the Glade and his people from their rage. It will be your task to go to Lynn Gileath and convince Gildor to come to the council. I will try my best. Greetings. I wish I could extend to you a warmer welcome, but these are dark times for the elves. The shadow of the enemy has grown long, longer than perhaps any had thought, and the elves of Lynn Gileath have paid the price for our own complacency. The Council of Esteldon. I wish that I could simply commit to such an endeavor, but it is not so simple. Many of my people are nearly overcome with grief and anger at what happened here, and the threats against Lynn Gileath are not yet dealt with. Our scouts tell me that the orcs in Nan Wathman are planning to move against us soon. The scouts say that these orcs are being led by a great Uruk of Engmar named Drukord, who camps in the deepest parts of Nan Wathrin. 
Perhaps if this Uruk were slain, Lynn Gileath would be protected enough for me to come to your council. It is a heavy burden, but I would task you with this, if you remain of stout heart. The Uruk is a mighty foe, and so you should not attempt to confront him on your own. If you must, then use the strength of this elf stone to find the strength to prevail from deep within yourself. As you wish, Gildan. Turn to Gildor. Ah, you have done it! We heard the wails of the orcs from here! You have seen to the safety of Lynn Gileath, Tommy. And for this, you have my thanks. With the Uruk Drukhorn slain, the threat of the orcs is lessened, and I am free to come to the Council of Estendon. You should bring word to Helbrad that we shall attend him, and that we will arrive soon. Your brave deeds may yet prove a strong foundation for our defenses. The message you bear is joyous, twice over. The Uruk Drukord is dead, and the elves have agreed to come to the council. You have done very well, for the might of the elves shall improve our lot all the more. You have my thanks for this. Of all those that have suffered, Downs, it is perhaps the people of Trestlebridge who have suffered the most. They have stood firm against all orc attacks, but their own numbers are dwindling. In fact, the mayor of the town, Lovell Boskins, was recently slain, and his daughter Nelly now leads the people there. I would ask you to go to Trestlebridge and speak with Nelly. We will need her leadership at the council. I will give you a word of warning. Although her people have the most to gain from coming, Nelly will be the hardest to convince. The constant attacks will block all thoughts of anything but dealing with the immediate threat. I will see what I can do. Council of Esteldin? Have you taken leave of your senses, man? Are you unaware of the dangers facing this town? The constant attacks we must endure? These men in the east, if they truly cared about the threats facing Trestlebridge, they would help us here with these orcs. We would not have had to suffer as we have. Aye, we lost all those dear to us. No, I shall not come to this council nor anything else, and I shall not be convinced otherwise. Now 
If you have no other business, leave me to see to the defense of this town. Good. You have returned. It does not surprise me that Nelly refused the call to the council, but that does not matter now. Word has arrived here that a large contingent of orcs is moving on Trestlebridge. The people there are a strong folk, but I fear they are no match for these orcs and the chieftain who leads them. We must go to their aid. In the past, the orcs that have attacked have been of the Tarkrip tribe. The bloodlust of that tribe usually causes them to throw themselves heedlessly into the battle, without forethought. The orcs that now move on Trestle Bridge appear to be of the more powerful Ongbur's tribe. These warriors are stronger and more skilled. The townsfolk will not be able to stop them. I would send a party of my men to aid them, but all my kin are dealing with matters in the east. You and I may reach them in time, however. You have done much already, but I would ask for your help in this battle. Gather what warriors you can, and return to me. But make haste. Trestlebridge does not have much time. As you wish. Are you prepared for the battle ahead? It will be a difficult one, and we will need all the warriors you can gather. Are you ready to leave now? Yes, let's go. The little town of Trestlebridge is all that stands between the Orcs of Angmar and Breelan to the south. Halbarad, Ranger of the North, gathers heroes to help defend Trestlebridge from the approaching onslaught. Quickly! I must have a word with you! What is it, Halbarad? The Orcs are nearly upon the town. Come with me quickly. We must convince Miss Moskins of the threat that is nearly upon her. Follow me. Miss Boskins, I'm Halbrad. Orcs of kind unknown are threatening your village. We have come to lend you aid. Ah, I see. So I refuse your call to... I think we know how to deal with orcs without your help. Why don't you return to your home? But, Miss Boskins! Mayor Boskins, look! One of the guards approaches. Come, perhaps it is another attack. Come, we must follow. The battle is upon us. Mayor Boskins, orcs of a kind I've never seen before approach. Perhaps your words were true, Halbarad. Come now, to the bridge! To the bridge! I fought before. They are of the Ongbur's tribe, and more will be upon us soon. Do not give up hope. We shall yet stand this day. Numbers without limit? I think the end is in sight, Miss Boskins. Smash him! Kill him! It is the war chief!
Trestlebridge is saved! Helberod, all of Trestlebridge is indebted to you. I only hope you can forgive my behavior towards you. Think nothing of it. It was an honor. I must leave you now and return. My companions, though, shall remain behind in the event that you need more help. I must have one final word with them. Then I will go. We have done well this day. I am indebted to you as well for your aid as I fear the battle would have turned against the free peoples had you not been here. I must leave now, and I hope it is not too much to ask of you to stay behind. I would ask that you ensure that Trestlebridge remains safe through the night, then return to me in Nestleton. This was a great victory, my friend. A great victory indeed. I'll take you back to Nelly's house. Elrond has healed Frodo of his mortal wound, and now the time has come to decide the fate of the One Ring. I can see no other path than that which leads to Mount Doom. Who then shall defend Eriador against the shadow of Angmar? I must apologize to you, for I fear my behavior towards you is nearly unforgivable. I see now that the constant orc attacks were nothing compared to what Angmar could bring to bear on this small town. You and the Ranger Halberd have risked your lives to save my people. I am in your debt. Thank you, Nelly. The debt I owe you and the Rangers cannot be repaid easily. But I hope to make a start of it by answering Halberd's call to the Council. Whatever strength the men of Trestlebridge can lend to Halberd's endeavor shall be his to command. Please, go tell Halberod that I will come to this Estleton as soon as I settle matters here. I am still responsible first to my people. But I see now that the free peoples of the North Downs must stand together if we are to remain free. Thank you, my friend. It is good to see you again. My thanks for your help in that battle. Without you and your companions, I would have surely fallen, as would Trestlebridge. It is also good to know that Nellie Boskins will come to the council. She is a fine and strong woman, and I will welcome her and her people's presence in the conflict ahead. While I await the arrival of those coming to the council, I must ask one final task of you. My chieftain, Aragorn, must be told of what has transpired here. I also would seek his counsel, as the position I find myself in is an unusual one. Aragorn has always been the one to lead, to organize, and inspire. If only the matter he was seeing to was not of much greater importance than he would be here. That cannot be helped, though. By now, Aragorn should have arrived at the refuge of Rivendell in the Trollshars. It is a hard ride that awaits you, but word must be taken to Aragorn of these matters. Look for him in one of the guest rooms of Elrond's house. As you wish, I will undertake this journey.
that I could be there to aid in these matters. But it would seem my fate lies to the south, and not the north. I will compose a message for Halborod, and ask Master Elrond if one of his elves could carry it to Estelden. You have done enough, and you have my thanks. For now, take what ease you can here.